talk about the spectacular Americans in the MISL, and nobody better exemplifies that than Scott Manning. Spectacular plays by a spectacular goaltender, Scott Manning. Buffalo won the game, and that man right there is the reason why. I teach people how. There's maybe a hidden and maybe uh, an unknown connection with these four players that we have. I kind of call them the Hungarian connection. And the reason is that all four players left their home country. All four were born in Budapest, I think, if that's right. And all have come to the United States and are now playing for the New York Arrows. So we want to talk to them a little bit about how they got here and what they think of the United States. First, Gene Strenicher. Gene played with the 1975 Outdoor Championship team. Gene, how did you get to the United States? First of all, I went to see them. My brother lives there. Then after I emigrated to Canada, my sister lives in Toronto. And Laszlo Harshani, who was, I guess, played 17 times for the Hungarian national team, came in 1975. Laszlo, how did you get here? Yeah, I came first to Switzerland, 75th. And uh, I played two years in Germany, and I am here in America two years ago. Right, and Laszlo plays with San Diego, as does Julie V, who uh, was with the under-21 team for Hungary when he left in 1969. How did that occur? Well, we went out to play in Italy, and after the game, I just took off. That was very simple. Act. And what about you, Tibor Molnar? Uh, I came the hard way. I climbed over the mountains from Yugoslavia to Austria. So uh, ever since I was small, I dreamed about uh, to come out to the United States. But for me, it wasn't as easy than for these guys. I was probably the youngest, too, because I was only 18 when I came out. And three of them, uh, Gino and, and Julie and Tibor, are all now U.S. citizens, if, that's, if I believe that's correct. And uh, Laszlo, do you have any plans to become a U.S. citizen? Yeah, I hope, because uh, I need first a green card. And I hope uh, this year I, I have a green card. And I, two, three years later, I, I hope, or five, and then no, exactly, I am an American citizen, too. Right. Two more players that we saw last week in Buffalo, uh, Lajos Ku and also Joe Horvath, came from, Uka, uh, from uh, Hungary as well. Did one of them come with you, is that right, Lajos? Uh, yes, we come together, we took family, we defected together. Okay. Is there any sense of, of continuity, even though you came about the same time? Do you feel a special, I guess, feeling uh, by coming from the same area? Not just the same country, but all the same city. Julie? Yeah. Uh, me and Tibor used to live just a couple of blocks from each other. And the third guy who lives in New York is Tida Tsigan, who used to be a, a soccer player, but his, his days are over now. Uh, we all came from the same area. But last we lived just a couple of... Uh, miles, I would think, from me and Gino as well. Well, obviously, with the current situation in Afghanistan and uh, the Russian situation, the question comes up. If uh, you had to do it all over again, would you stay or would uh, you do what you did? Oh, this is the best country in the world. I think we, made, we all made a good choice in, in this country, definitely. What about you, Tibor? Yeah, well, I wouldn't go back there for a million dollars, so... <laughs> you, you like the American girls, too. You're still single. Well, I'm getting married soon, so... <laughs> That's great. To an I'm American engaged. Now? Yes. Super. What about you, Gino? I like my life as it is, and I, I think I would do it again. Okay. And Laszlo? No, I don't talk about the politics, because I would like to go back to Hungary, and I, I, I like Hungary. But right. Do you still have some family there? Yes, my parents live in, everybody live in Hungary. Okay, that's understandable. We thank you also very much for spending time with us at halftime, and we wish you continued success. And when people look at the success of the Arrows this year, part of it will have to be to you ver very four solid players. We'll be back with more halftime activities right after this. Now, that's a new, that's a change, right? Bart Farley. Bart Farley from the University of Vermont, who is now in goal for Detroit. 
Now in goal for Detroit. Now we have an underball touchdown. Farley was an All-American at the University of Vermont in all New England two consecutive years. So Detroit's going to try it with a new keeper. Turner couldn't cut the muster in the first half. And Turner's a good keeper. He's played a lot for this Detroit team. He's kept them in play quite a bit. the shot. Sprinter, the rebound back to the So the new keeper is in. We're in the second half. This is the major indoor soccer league. We're in Cobo Arena, a very old arena here in Detroit. They have two new arenas. Yes. In the form of Joe Lewis Arena and also Pontiac. But they have attempted to stay here at Cobo Arena. Cobo Arena is an excellent place to play indoor soccer, though. As the crowd gets right down on play, and the arrows have somewhat stunned this crowd as the arrows are on top of the Detroit Lightning, 7-3. to three. We welcome everyone on WPIX 11 Alive in New York. We have been on every Friday night now, going on our sixth week. Bringing indoor soccer, and Kyle, very importantly, indoor soccer was brought to a bit of a head this past week. Sports Illustrated wrote a tremendous article about the indoor soccer game, and you fans at home, not to promote Sports Illustrated, but it really tells a story about where the game came from and where it's at now. You look at Detroit, they're firing. It's a big credit to the league. And the essence, Terry, of that uh, story was that, uh, to quote the writer J.D. Reed, that by comparison, he said outdoor soccer was pale. Too far for I don't know that I could, would go quite that far, but certainly indoor soccer is extremely exciting, and it has its place on the American <laughs> sports scene. Well, you convert, Kyle. Farley, number 20 in goal for Detroit. New keeper for Detroit, and this is the second half. I would you like to be the goaltender going in at halftime, and you've allowed seven goals in the first half? Well, you know somebody else is going to be warming up. And the worst part of that is, we said, it's not totally the goalkeeper's fault, though certainly Turner did allow a few goals himself. Jungle. Lays it, Jungle, shot. And so Farley comes up, and he anticipated the shot. Well, he had the benefit of watching Jungle the whole first half of play. And Jungle, once again, putting the ball between Fagan's legs on the shot, but this time Farley, unlike Turner, makes the save. Urkeley showing nice movement inside. inside Good pass. Urkeley against the boards. Urkeley is one of two players, now three players, on the Detroit Lightning, former New York Arrows players, Craney, Rennery, and Urkeley. Farley, new keeper. What do you know about him, Kyle? Not much. He's just a young man. Farley played, as we said earlier, at the University of Vermont. Had a, an outstanding collegiate career, but we have seen a lot of players who've had that and have not done well in professional soccer. You know, I'll tell you, not, not to wrap on Turner too long. As you see Segoda looking for the rebound. But the fact of the matter is, if you had to assess the Detroit team, you'd have to say that Coach Terry Fisher put together an absolutely superb front line, good offense, respectable defense, and a good midfield, but he hasn't done so in goal. There are some teams in this league that have not only one player, but the gentleman you saw at halftime, Scott Manning, plays backup to Jimmy May in Buffalo. Arrows have two outstanding keepers in the form of Shep Mersing and Enzo DePede. Well, with indoor soccer being so new and uh, its skills, the, it, the demands of the game being so different, it's impossible to predict who's going to be a great indoor goalkeeper. So often you have to go through several before you can find a player like a Scott Manning or a Jim May or a Shep Metzing. Guess what that was, Kyle? Did you hear that, that sounds like about? Crazy George. Man has no loyalties. He's <laughs> over here with a Detroit shirt on. I swear, I, I've seen him now. Let's see. In New York, I've seen him twice. Two, he does a great job with New York fans. I've seen him in Detroit twice, and I've seen him in Wichita every time I've been out there. Love to be his travel agent. <laughs> I'll play off the back. Well, that's what they say about you, Kyle. <laughs> Pittsburgh 5, Buffalo 3 at halftime. Pittsburgh has won nine straight games. How about that? Hey, they're in our division, sports fans. 
They had a coaching change. They sent uh, two coaches that did a great job last year in the MISL in Cincinnati. Cincinnati franchise was dropped in the MISL. Five new franchises added. It is now a 10-team league. And the intensity of this league, I go back to a statement, Kyle, I made earlier, and that is, this is like the old National Hockey League with six teams. Every time you come into somebody's arena, they're really gunning for you. Great home records on all of these teams. Great home records. Arrows are undefeated at Nassau Veterans Memorial Coliseum. Arrows at home again. V upset. He's about to take a swing. Wow, do you believe at, that? Uh, as the referee comes over to separate the players, V upset. He got hit in the eye. Detroit, oh, a great kick save by Messing. See, that's what Messing does. Messing goes to the ground. He goes anywhere he needs to, but when he releases a shot that comes to him, Boom, he hits it wide. Look at Julie V, tries to take his repass. Farley makes a nice move, cuts the angle off. Arrows return home to play Cleveland on Wednesday, February 20th at 8 o'clock. You want to call for information? Call 516-692-7769. Play off the boards. That's Messing. Shep Messing lays it out with his foot. Messing, the brilliant goaltender of New York. Rennery goes too high with a foot. He knows so. See the referee whistles. The dangerous play. Be an indirect foul. Holding it up one hand indicates that it'll be an indirect call. The referee might be the tallest person on the field tonight. <laughs> I think McLaughlin, uh, who's about running down in the corner in front of us now, may be a little bit taller. That's the way he parts his hair. He wears those lifts in his shoes. Right. <laughs> Escalated <laughs> sneaker. Zikinia, probably the greatest name in sports with a return pass. Wow, what a save by Messing on Posse. Number nine, Arrows return. Here they come, right wing, Arshani, number three. Sliding tackle. Look at Rennery. Rennery wants to show these guys, hey, you made a mistake by letting me go from New York. They actually didn't let him go. It was a request by Rennery to come to Detroit. He knows the general manager, he knows the coach, and he knows a good playing time here. Great pass from Sutevsky. Rennery, Could one be two touch. minutes. Oh. No. The reason Kyle said it could be two minutes is there's a delay of game call in the, in the indoor soccer game. We haven't seen it so far tonight. We have seen a couple of penalties that have been in New York for unnecessary roughness. Posse, the shot blocked by Tuksha. Tuksha, 21 of New York. Arrows in white with a red trim. Zikinia, we're playing indoor soccer in the major indoor soccer league, 200 by 85 foot configuration. It's the size of a hockey rink with the artificial surface put down. The goals are six foot six high and 12 feet wide. This is Len Rennery, number 10, Farmer Arrows player. Rennery sends it off the boards. Former New York Arrows player, 16, Reynolds. You know, uh, I was talking about that. Uh, shot in Sports Illustrated for the Indoor Soccer League. Three of the players in that shot, there was one shot surrounding the goal, are three former New York players. Urkeley, Carl Rose, who plays for St. Louis, and that man, Craig Reynolds. New York has a lot of players playing around. You haven't read this yet, Kyle? You haven't read this yet? Here, I got it right here for you. you want to read this? <laughs> oh, <boy. laughs> You make me feel bad. Huh? It's all right, fans. Kyle, he's been away. Uh, you don't get to when, you don't get delivery in Colorado with these things, very. Really. You know? There's a pass by Rennery, and Annis puts a head on it. Well, without question, Terry, New York Laden with so much talent, they could easily uh, fulfill the rosters of several teams. Look at that player, Coley. Now, what everyone was asking for, you see the hands raised up in the air, was that delay a game that called weekend. Here's a shot way wide of the goal mouth. That's crazy George off to our right. We are way down low. This is uh, probably the finest announced position you could have in an arena, as we are almost sitting right on the floor. Matter of fact, I'm sitting on the floor. <laughs> Kyle took the chair. Wow, what a play! Lazlo Orshani! Number three, trapped the ball out front, standing by himself. Harshani throws it right by, and Tibor Molnar should get the assist. Harshani, who's played 16 times for the Hungarian national team. We see him getting in position in the middle. He traps the ball as he's falling, toes it with his right leg, 
past Bart Farley into the corner, and it's going to put the arrows up eight to three. It was Molnar on the right of your screen. Look at Arshani. I don't think he necessarily wanted to do it that way, but uh, even falling, he shows a level of skill that's incredible. That'll show up in the New York Arrows highlight film. Arrows return home two great games in the Coliseum. Upcoming Cleveland, they're on a win streak in Cleveland. They're there on Wednesday, February 20th, then Hartford in February 22nd. Hartford finally moved into their new arena up in Hartford. Molnar, long run, controls the ball. They had over 12,000 in Hartford. Hey, Kyle, give me that Sports Illustrated back. <laughs> Fans, Kyle Rowe just tried to take my Sports Illustrated with the article about the indoor soccer. And offered me a dollar for a used copy. Detroit across the red line. And now you see, as you're watching Detroit, you'll see three people converge on jungle, but he still controls. Look at Molnar, I'll try and give it back to him. There he was, but Farley was looking for him. I'm going to read you a sign, fans. We had a sign day at the Coliseum. It was quite interesting. At the Nassau Coliseum. There's a sign here in the arena that whoever wrote it, I'd love to interview him at the end of the game to see what they had to say about it. As the play moves into the midfield, I'll read it. It says, Arrows, take some good advice. Tonight, we're going to burn you twice. Don't touch the ball while it's in flight, because lightning strikes the ball tonight. Must have had a contest in the uh, grade schools here. It's right. not that bad of no, it's poetry. Bad. That's You're right. just inaccurate. That's all. Totally <laughs> inaccurate as the arrows are on top. Eight to three over Detroit. But this is indoor soccer. At any given moment, the tide turns. Teams have been known to score four or five goals in a flurry. Luis Alberto leaving it. The particular story that the Sports Illustrated, look at Sagoda. Sagoda just scores a goal, number 20 is first of the game. Much like you saw Jim McLaughlin in the first half. And they have totally intimidated the goalkeepers from Detroit tonight as you watch it again. Segoda with Alberto in the corner, Jungle on the far side. They have to respect Jungle. And Segoda gets within six yards and lets it fly, beating Farley. And now with 4.59 left to go in the third period, New York's up 9-3. to three. Bronco Segoda has been relatively quiet for the they past couple goal of goal weeks for the Arrows. Even though he has Sagoda. scored 45 goals, Jonathan Bronco started off with a Sagoda. flurry. I mean, he came out smoking. Can, can you believe this, sports fans? Bronco Segoda has 45 goals. Jungle has 63. Now, with his 45 goals at this point, not more than, oh, maybe 10 or 12 games ago, he was tied with Steve Jungle for goals output. Might not even been 10 games, but I'm going to say it's 10 games that Sagoda was tied with Jungle. Well, Jungle now has 63, Sagoda now has 45. That shows you how Jungle has been playing these past couple of weeks. Great pass. This is McLaughlin. Shot! Save! Farley didn't even get a hand on it. Hit the board. There's the difference in the indoor game. You see the shot. It was wide of the goal. Boom, it ends up halfway out in the playing surface again. You can never, never discount the ball until it goes up over the plexiglass or into the net. This is Fagan, 13. Fagan makes the turn, comes up field. Find some running room for Detroit. Detroit needs to get back into the game in the third quarter. They only have three minutes, 55 seconds. But the Arrows have done two great things tonight. One, they have killed off penalties, and that's where Detroit is very strong. And two, that when they have totally submerged or tried to come back and play jungle tight, the Arrows have applied the pressure. Now look at this. The forwards are not hustling back to pressure. Look at eight Johnny Moore. He's really ragged-legged. Ragged-legged. I don't even know if that's a term, ragged-legged. You see, Satevsky. Dalmir Satevsky, rather easily, standing in front, strikes the left foot and goes right by Farley. Well, Sagoda's going to get the assist, but this man, Jim McLaughlin, who goes up with courage to head the ball down into the corner, gets it to Sagoda, who plays it across Satevsky. Farley having to react from post to post, can't get back quick enough. 
Here we see a different angle. McLaughlin heading it off the off the boards to Sagoda. Left foot inside by Zetevsky. And it puts New York up 10 to 3, a seven goal margin. You know, Kyle, in the MISL, not untrue of a lot of sports, you don't share the revenue when you come to the visiting arena, but the arrows should charge tonight as they are giving <laughs> a soccer clinic to the Detroit Lightning. They should pay the arrows players to they're really showing them how to play the indoor game using the boards while pressuring the ball. Detroit right out front. Look at that opportunity. Hernandez with a wide open goal mouth couldn't strike the ball and now watch the arrows. They don't come back on defense. You got to come back and play defense. Tremendous anticipation by Jungle as he knew the Detroit defender was going to stop the ball. Jungle coming around, getting the shot off, off the uh, Detroit steal. To quote a famous New York sportscaster, I would have to say that the goalie has to be saying right now, give me a break. <laughs> give me a break. These guys are barraging me. You're letting, you're giving Sagoda and Jungle two on one breakaways. You can't do that. Arrows have really played well. New York on top, 10 to three, two minutes, 10 seconds. Here's Jungle again, Farley. He never touched it, it went wide. Now watch Detroit come out of their own zone. Jungle on that last shot, doing what he wanted to do, hitting it first time with his left foot, keeping it low, just going off the post. As Messi comes out to cut off the angle, a great play, and Dorico goes up to head it away, out to Julie V. That's the first real, other than the open net they shot, they haven't really been attacking, Kyle. Look at Julie V, great footwork, Julie V. And you know, there's a couple of things about the arrows that you have to point out, and as you fans have followed us all season long, and maybe now know the game a little bit, you can't let the arrows with this much talent ever get comfortable playing against you. Because if you don't pressure them, they have players that are so talented that they will absolutely do a number on you. Now, when the arrows are in a tight game, some of those players do maybe or maybe don't perform so well. But the point is, is when you let them freelance like this, they're absolutely beautiful. And the way that you avoid that is a lot of coaches will have their forwards back check, which I think Terry is what you were referring that the uh, some of the Detroit players are not doing. Is Moore gets wide open, plays it back to Rennery. Number 10, Len Rennery takes the rebound. The lights go off in Kobo, but watch it again. You see Rennery right in the right corner of your picture. Moore steals the ball from V back to Rennery. Hits it with his right foot and keeps it low. Messi can't get across fast enough. He really hit a nice shot, Kyle. Here's a different angle. Moore in the corner draws Dorico to him. Messi too high up. From that distance, couldn't get down. That's Rennery's first goal as a Detroit Lightning player. Messing was Detroit there. Goal, his first, scored by number 10. But he was not there as Rennery hit it low. There he is, number 10, Len Rennery. He asked us to say hello to his beautiful wife and his mother and father watching the game in New York. We want to say hello not only to the Renneries, but to all of our fans on WPIX 11 Alive. Emmy Award-winning WPIX with that 7.30 news crew. What a great bunch they are. Immediately following tonight's game, you'll see the news on Action News, 11 Alive. Every Friday night, you've been watching indoor soccer, the major indoor soccer league way. It's the New York Arrows defending champions. Arrows on top of their division. You know, and I wonder, the question comes up, you know, fans, as you're watching the game tonight, all right? And Detroit scores, and I said it's a good thing they don't do this when the Arrows score, or we would be in black all night long. It'd save a lot of money, though. But every time Detroit scores, they turn off the lights in the arena. Well, part of it is, as you see here, Coley break out of his own zone, is entertainment for the fans. But you know, very much a part of entertainment of the fans are the fans at home trying to watch the game, too. <laughs> Well, this arena does not have the best lighting facility in uh, all the world. Indeed, we've had to bring some of our own lights in as we have now hit the end of the third quarter. We'll be back with more MISL action. <laughs> I teach people how to play tennis all day long. But well, when it's over, I'm into a different sport. 
That's why I like this new Buick Regal. It's me. It's tough and sporty. Yet it gets a lot of miles to the gallon of gas. And the sticker price on a new Buick Regal is only $65.06. So if you want to be a sport, go see your Buick dealer and try out a new Buick Regal. It's the only way to go. Greenwich Village. It has a chemistry all its own, just like every other New York village. And town. And neighborhood. From the Long Island Expressway to the Coney Island Expressway. From East Chester to East 14th Street in Brooklyn. And the Chemical Bank branches there are part of that chemistry. Chemical branch managers make sure of that. In Grand Central Station, that means creating a chemical branch a commuter can relate to. With hours that are right on track. Well, in our Huntington branch, it means giving a commuter's family something that they can relate to. A ballet. It means that every year in Harlem, one of our customers makes a deposit that gets a lot of interest. He cooks lunch for the entire staff. So the chemistry's so right, you can almost taste it. I'd like to talk to you about the Sony Betamax and an incredible feature called Betascan. I'm Tom Williams, Sr., and if you know tennis, you know my son. Here's a cassette of his last championship match. Betascan lets me go fast forward in reverse so I can skip the boring stuff like this long rally and stop when I come to the real exciting parts like Tom Jr. here dashing onto the court to pick up the ball. Isn't Betamax terrific? It lets you see what you've been missing and miss what you don't want to see. It's from Sony, the one and only. This bud's for everybody who puts in a hard day's work. This bud's for you, for all you do. The king of beers is coming through. Yeah, just for you, that distinctively clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. For all you do. This bud's for you. at Cobo Arena as you watch Crazy George coming up on your screen. All right, Crazy. Hey, see, no loyalty, New York Aeros fans. You better talk to them about this. We're in a Detroit Lightning. Number 10, Len Rennery just scored a goal for the Detroit Lightning. Made that man happy. But Rennery also had been assigned the job of trying to stop Steve Jungle tonight. How do you do that, Len? Well, Terry, to stop Jungle, he's so quick, he's such a good player, you just have to stay as close to Jungle on the field as I am to you right now. A little elbow, a little shove here and there doesn't hurt, maybe you step on his toe once. You have to do anything to stop that guy, he's that good. So Len Rennery says, hey, you gotta be a little physical against Steve Jungle if you're gonna stop him. Well, nobody's touched him all night tonight. <laughs> jungle, Jungle is giving everyone a lesson tonight. He scored his 63rd goal of the season. He had four in the first half. Well, I'll tell you, Kyle, the dude can play the game. <laughs> you wonder what you're watching? This is the Major Indoor Soccer League. Major Indoor Soccer League, to quote the article, but one wonders, who are all these folks watching? Is it soccer or is it soccer? The crowds are coming in in increasing numbers, but still one, no one is sure why they like this game. Maybe Paul Cannell, as I quote him from this article, says, I'm astounded at the crowds. I sense the Americans have found a game they can love. We've come up with something that's magic. Magic or human pinball, the craze will be around for a while. That's what the article says about this game you're watching. This game is the major indoor soccer league. It's indoor soccer. Arrows defending champions. They have white with red trim in the dark uniforms of the Detroit Lightning. The Lightning trying to avenge a loss in New York last Sunday where the Arrows showed the same kind of dominance. Matter of fact, the score now, 10 to four, was the same score when the game ended. Now, look at this play out front, Messing. Messing took two players into the boards. One of them was Urkeley. Kicking called on Johnny Moore of Detroit. This is why they call Here's him Here's Curly. Bernie Fagan plays the ball over to Curly. He'll spin on it, try to heal it in. Messing makes the save. Three of them down. There's four. And now Messing goes to get the ball with Alberto in the goal. 
That's that's as he's known in uh, Detroit. Gentleman Johnny Moore. Yes. Shot Dakota with a header. Look at three rebound shots. New York pressuring the ball on top, 10 to four. And this is the fourth quarter. Terry Lewicki along with Kyle Rowe Jr. Live from Detroit. This is the major indoor soccer league. Boy, Strenitzer has to make a brilliant play. Four shot, missing save. He didn't have a lot of time to take the shot because the arrows come back. Their forwards really come back, Kyle. They don't give any of the Detroit players time to get away a one-on-one -on -one situation. As Fagan being pressured by Molnar, out to Lund. Lund at the top of the arc. Now, Kyle, if you're trailing like this, do you, anything particular that you might see the Detroit players doing, taking more shots? No, I'd say uh, getting in a cab and going to a local church and lighting a few candles. <laughs> Seems appropriate. If anybody lit any candles, it would help us out here. It would probably double the light power. Now, obviously, they will have to begin uh, taking a few more chances but uh, what that results in normally is a lot of a lot more New York goals and you just hope that you can outscore a team the crowd a few minutes ago was chanting seven which they felt was the uh, the number of goals they needed unanswered to put them ahead of New York and that's right New York ahead ten to fourth I moment. thought they were calling for Sakinia <laughs> number seven who plays more Detroit Number seven, Zucchini, and number seven, Jungle. Look at Jungle. Number seven, Steve Jungle. The crowd one and seven. There he is. Steve Jungle scores his fifth goal of this game. Unbelievable display of talent. Well, it's a great pass by Julie V as he waits the pass, or he hits it with the right pace. He beats Farley. Farley diving to the far corner, and that's Jungle's 64th goal. Here we see him again, not even stopping it. Hits Six. it on the run, his 64th goal of the year, his fifth tonight. Can you imagine if anybody would have told you at the beginning of this season that a player would have 64 goals? Were, were this boxing, the referee would stop the contest. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> Jungle to Julie V. Arrows totally dominant tonight. You want a lesson in the indoor game? Watch this. What a pass. Four men had come back on two Arrows players, and they still have the ball. An un unbelievable display by the New York Arrows showing why they are the class of the indoor soccer league. And I only say that in due respect to everyone involved, but... The players on the field, Coach Don Popovich has to be responsible. Popovich has put one great team together, and I have only seen, Kyle, that a lot of teams sometimes hit dismal spells like every team in this indoor soccer league has done, and the Arrows have yet to do that. Right, even in the game they lost earlier this year to Detroit, it was 7-5 to five and close all the way. The game they lost to Buffalo last week was 6-5. to five. They lost... 10 to 9 in overtime to Buffalo as well. So every game that they're in is a close one. Even Arrows, when they lose. Arrows playing amazingly well this year. They are the defending champions of the Major Indoor Soccer League. You're watching them on WPIX 11 Alive in New York. Time running down. 10 minutes, 19 seconds remaining. We'll remind you to stay by for Pat Harper and Bill Jorgensen with Action News. Kyle, they're becoming friends of yours, I think. You know, I don't even know if you've ever met them. Uh, they're writing me little letters. <laughs> little thank you notes. Hey, I Kyle, appreciate. by the way, I, I have a letter for you, Kyle. I didn't give it to you before the game. It's a fan letter. I know, with dog paw marks. There you go. <laughs> yeah. this one. I'm not going to let you this, set yourself no. up. I swear to you, Kyle, I have, a, I have a fan letter, and this one is really beautiful handwriting. I was tempted to open it myself just to see. But the perfume is too much, I know. <laughs> the referee whistled right here referees and this referee has done a great job tonight in this game on screen keeping everything under control called Tuxia for holding and now calls Hernandez this time referees in the major indoor soccer league very interesting guys this referee as you look at him is a printer 
by trade. Now, that's not to take away from his refereeing, but you wonder why does a man have to have a job as a printer? That's because soccer has never been on the upswing like it is right now today in the United States. And guys like this are finally emerging to where they can take control and all the things they've learned, Kyle, in the soccer association. You know, if you want to be a professional football referee, you start in those guys' history. If you pull out a dossier on one of those guys, they've been refereeing since grade school, high school, college, conference refereeing, then into the pros. Now, soccer referees haven't had that benefit. No, they don't. I believe we're, we're about to see uh, maybe a change in goalkeepers or a change in players. Noah Harshani comes on the field. And maybe Enzo De Pede may be coming on for Shep Messing. But you're right, the referee Hans Schwink, uh, they're mentioning to Messing. Popovich <laughs> wanting to leave Messing in the nets. I'm sure Messing feeling that with only four goals, you know, that Pop might help his goals <laughs> against average if he can get off the field. But it also gives his good friend Enzo De Pede a chance to get some work. Coach Don Popovich has really done a job with these guys. He was loose tonight, Kyle, before the game, really loose. He knows he's got a great team. He knows he's got the all-star game coming up, and he's starting to loosen up a little bit. And he's done a great job with his team. But he wouldn't let Messing come out of the game for Enzo De Pede right there because, let me tell you, I've seen games with this much time take a turn become very tight it's 11 4 arrows on top and that just shows you how important it really gives a little more credence to our halftime piece shows you how important the goalkeeper is in the indoor soccer game well with eight minutes and 44 seconds to go in the game uh last week stevie jungle scored four goals himself in in seven minutes so uh, it's certainly possible for Detroit to get back in the game with eight minutes to go. Not likely, but it's possible. I tell you, Kyle, it's, uh, I don't know, you, you look at the indoor soccer game now as Detroit's coming down. Rennery, Rennery takes a pass in himself. Oh, he knew he had a shot. Literally playing a wall pass to himself, and the ball bounced up extremely high, up about chest height, as he tries to hit a side volley. Kyle, we're warming down. It's coming down to, this is uh, mid-February. We're coming up on the playoffs. Playoffs, very important now. A six teams will make it into the playoffs out of ten. Six out of the ten teams. Now, in the Central Division, in which Detroit is playing, they got some problems with the loss tonight. Yeah, they do. That'll put them 12 and 13 if they do go ahead and lose this game. And it's going to now mean that uh, St. Louis and Cleveland, the two teams in fourth and fifth place, have a chance to press them for that third playoff spot. Wichita, 12 and 12 as well. Wichita has to be loving this game. Yeah. St. Louis plays in Philly tomorrow. The Arrows, you wonder when they're coming back home. That's on Wednesday, February 20th, against Cleveland. Then they play a game two nights later, the 22nd, against Hartford. So Wednesday, February 20th. Then on Friday, February 22nd, you want ticket information? You can call right now. Get a pen. You can call right now, 516 Six nine two seven seven six nine. That's just dial the letters New York Arrow. N Y A R R O W. But dial five one six before you do that. Arrows on top, undefeated at home. At the Nassau Veterans Memorial Coliseum in Uniondale, New York. But a short ride from the city for a Wednesday or Friday game. Nobody believes that when I say it. Cleveland's on a tear. They're playing three games at home. They could really make it a tight race. Everybody's coming into uh, Nassau Coliseum wondering who's the first one to knock the arrows off at home. Arrows playing well here tonight. Terry Lewicki along with Kyle Rowe Jr. Welcome all of our viewers on WPIX 11 Alive in New York, 649 remaining fourth quarter here in Detroit. We've got the All-Star game, Terry, coming up on the 27th in St. Louis. And New York will have seven players in addition to the coach, Don Popovich. You know, there's a time in that game where Pop could probably have a whole New York Arrows team out there on the field. 
selected by the players as New York attacks. Unbelievable how the arrows even look at that's McLaughlin 16. He had Doug Pollard 14 down on right wing. DePeta getting itchy on the bench. He wants to come in and play. Played for New York in the All-Star game. It's going to be DeRico and Jungle and Segoda, of course. Shep Messing, Laszlo Harshani, and Julie V. Good save is made by Messing. Lays it out to Alex Rost. Between the legs. That's like a behind-the-back pass in basketball. Did you see DeRico's kids at halftime? Are they cute? Yeah. Moore. He is so proud of those kids. Taken down McLaughlin. Nice play. McLaughlin to Luis Alberto. Taken away by Lund. Five minutes, 40 seconds remaining. In this, the fourth quarter of play, the Arrows have really put on a show tonight. Steve Young. Oh! No goal, no goal. Keep the lights on, folks. Keep the lights on. We'll show it. Here we'll see. The call was that the ball was already in control in Messing's hands. We'll see if that's the case. As there, it's bouncing once. Here comes Johnny Moore in. He kicks it out of Messing's hands. Trost calling for the foul, which apparently was given by Han Schwink. And New York calling a timeout, and I believe we'll see Enzo to payday. Take a look at that tape again of the promo, the promo. Arrows upcoming games at the Nassau Veterans Memorial Coliseum. On Wednesday, as you watch and you'll be able to see such fine players as this gentleman right here, number 20, Broncos Segoda. Arrows return home on Wednesday, February 20th against Cleveland, 8 o'clock. February 22nd against Hartford, and then one week later, the 29th against Houston. Great games. Call that number right there, 516-692-7769. Out on the island, you'll get ticket information as Enzo De Pede comes out on the field. He'll get a little warm-up. Not much warm-up. Five minutes and 30 seconds, or actually 29 seconds. De Pede is a fine keeper. Crowd happy there is Gene Strenicher. Helping warm the payday up has now put two in the goal. I <laughs> <laughs> just shows the scoring power in the New York Arrows. <laughs> they even score on their own goalkeepers. Uh, each team allowed one timeout per half. New York calling the first one of the evening. They're not cumulative, so New York will not have a chance to call another one this half. Time remaining five minutes and 29 seconds. Arrows on the free kick. It is Damir Sotepsky, that man, number 12, Altrost. He has Jungle on right wing. Sotepsky, Sotepsky made the run down left wing. Strenitzer and Renato Chilla. Look at Chile, steps over the ball immediately to Payday. Distributes, long pass. Jungle trapped against the boards, makes a move inside. Jungle playing brilliantly tonight. Five goals, 64th of the season. This game has gone. The Arrows got on top early, one to nothing. Reynolds tied it up. It was one to one. Then Jungle got his first of the game, his 60th of the season. It was two to one. McLaughlin made it three to one. It was all oh, then three to two. All of this taking place in the first quarter. Then Jungle, with very few moments left, scored his 61st goal, his second of that quarter. That being the first, it was four two. Arrows came out, and can you believe this? Scored three unanswered goals. They made it 5-2, 6-2, 7-2. Jungle is 63rd of the season. Then Lund finally 7-3. Then they came out and scored again. Three unanswered goals in, the, in that in the third quarter. So they score in two quarters, three unanswered goals, and that's the differentia right here. He did that very well. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, Kyle. Crazy, hadn't had much to cheer about with no, the home crowd. He was so excited when DePayday in the warm-ups let a goal in, he started cheering. Lemmy Lund thinking that a penalty kick would be called. Referee Hanschwink indicating by holding one hand up that it's an indirect free kick, which means that the ball will have to be touched by another player before it can go in the goal and count. But that can be a defender, so he could deflect it off another man. 
crazy not getting much response. He thinks the crowd is crazy here. The payday battling finally grabs hold. The reason the Detroit crowd doesn't have much to cheer about, they trail 11 to 4, four minutes remaining, and this is the fourth quarter. Kyle Rowe Jr., I'm Terry Lewicki. Kyle, Arrows really playing well, the best of any team in the MISL right now. And if they continue at form, that'll put them with an 18 and 5 record, which will give them an overwhelming lead, put them uh, four and a half games ahead of Philadelphia. Philadelphia not playing tonight, but will be playing tomorrow against St. Louis. Well, some upcoming events in the MISL. It's the All-Star Game on February 27th. Coach Don Popovich, head coach of that, the All-Star Game. First All-Star Game in the MISL. It is played for the benefit of the Players Association. So all the accured revenues go to the Players Association. The payday, finally, Johnny Moore. The lights go out in Kobo. Watch it again. Moore is going to score his 20th goal as DeSouza plays the ball over to Moore. He hits a side volley as he's going down into the corner, his 20th goal as Chilla comes across to try to make the save. Good pressure by Chilla, but it still is going to give Detroit their fifth goal of the night. There it is again, DeSouza over to Moore, hits it with the side. The payday gets a hand on it, but it still goes in. A good indicator of the fourth quarter is that that is only the second goal scored. And if the arrows have slowed down play, and Farley's done a good job. You look at the score, arrows on top, 11-5 on top of the Detroit Lightning. Your attention will Marianne Sampson please report to the announcer's table. Marianne Sampson. And I tell you, Kyle, they have slowed the play down, that being the arrows. You're taking the tempo of the game. We remind everyone, stay tuned for Action News with Pat Harper and Bill Jorgensen right after this exciting Major Indoor Soccer League New York Arrows game here on 11 Alive. Time running down, three minutes and 10 seconds. Play moving on, that's Chilla. Arrows are control. They'll try and keep the clock moving all the time, get rid of the time remaining. Always pressuring, though. You see the arrows always go forward, folks. That's the difference of the arrows. Spectacular play tonight, Kyle. Uh, and just to summarize a little bit, only two goals in this, the fourth. Arrows came out in the second and third quarters and really were dominant. Not only dominant, they took complete control of the game. New York probably has the best ability in the whole league to score unanswered goals as they get a chance. Tuksha plays the ball across the front. I shouldn't say Tuksha, that was uh, Julie V. Sagona now with it to Jungle. Reminder fans, the arrows return to the Nassau Veterans Memorial Coliseum to play Cleveland on Wednesday, Feb 20, and on Friday, February 22nd against Hartford. Upcoming in the All-Star Game for Detroit, Fleming Lund, who we've seen tonight, and Patter Coley, but a surprise might be that uh, All-Star goalkeeper for the Central Division, one of them anyway, is going to be Chris Turner, the man who's been replaced in the second half by goalkeeper Bart Farley that we see right now. Time running down, you see Farley down on the ground. Finally the save and they clear out of their own zone. Rennery called for pushing. And uh, Rennery has just <laughs> given a nice hand sign to uh, the New York bench. Handball called against Rennery. Handball on Rennery. Time running down a minute and 45 seconds. And we'll have the three-star selection for you. Action news immediately following Arrows return home. Play Cleveland on Wednesday, February 20th. And they play again on Friday night, February 22nd. Arrows have played so well tonight. 
They're avenging a loss that they took here two weeks ago when we televised on WPIX this very same Detroit Lightning New York Arrows game. The Arrows were on top that night score. Two goals by Detroit in this. The fourth quarter has brought it back to an 11 to 5 deficit. In the corner is Lund, hits it off the boards, out to Posse who rifles the left foot shot past the payday. And it brings Detroit to within five, but there's only a minute and 10 seconds left in the game. Right on the hour, we tell everybody immediately following tonight's major indoor soccer league New York Arrows game, you can see action news. Stay tuned, Pat Harper and Bill Jorgensen will be coming your way immediately following tonight's major indoor soccer league game. Arrows, defending champions, the New York Arrows are totally dominant tonight's game. Clock runs down, under a minute remaining, Arrows on top, 11 to six. Recap the game, the Arrows have played devastating soccer. Steve Jungle, Bronco Segoda, all these guys for the Arrows have played very well. Terry Lewicki along with Kyle Rowe Jr. We're in Cobo Arena in Detroit, and Kyle, Great Arrows play by, uh, oh, by Bronco Segoda there as he broke on Lund and was hauled down by Lund, but he really had the advantage. The referee might have let the play continue because New York had the advantage, but it's his, his discretion to call the foul or not, and he did on that case and stopped play. Time running down, under a minute remaining. Clock is running. Arrows would be happy just to kill the remainder. Chil Chilla comes back, 45 seconds. Fagan lays it off the boards. Look at the payday. New is coming all the way. Ends up to payday in for Shep Messing. The payday offside pass, so bring it back. Kyle Rowe Jr., once again, the arrows show us why they are playing so well in the indoor soccer league and have so many players on the all-star team. And even though early, Terry, they did not lead the league uh, quite the way Houston did, we knew because Houston played so many games at home early that it was just a matter of time before New York displayed their dominance as they are here jungle plays the ball Steve jungle number seven the scoring machine jungle just threw it by fagan once again so quickly watch it again jungle in the corner with the goda in the slot i really thought he was going to pass it to Sagoda, and he may have intended to but it went in the goal without Sagoda having to touch it so jungle with his 65th goal of the year his sixth goal tonight which duplicates his feat of last Sunday when they beat New when they beat Detroit 10 to 4. We have some Arrow fans joining us on WPIX right here at 10 o'clock. New York goal is that goal you just saw by that man right there, Steve Jungle, 65 goals this season. He is scoring over three goals a game. He is an amazing player. Time running down, only 15 seconds remaining in this. The fourth quarter of the major indoor soccer league, Detroit. Here's Jungle's shot. Oh, he really powdered that one and hit the back of the board over the top of the plexiglass. Jungle going for number seven. Great pass by Sagoda. There he is blowing a kiss to his friend Sagoda, who waited for him and tried to lead him, which would have tied a record set by Gene Geimer last year of seven goals in a game. Time running down. Eight, seven, six. Arrows are going to win this one, 12 to 6. Horn goes off. Arrows win it 12 to 6. We'll be back with a wrap-up right after this. 